Hello everyone, thank you for joining us once again on the Global Underwater Explorers YouTube channel. My name is Nico Luro, host of GUE's YouTube channel and host of Creative Imagery for Divers on GUE TV. We are doing our latest installment of Careers of Diving, because as we all know, as divers, we can branch off into numerous weird and wonderful career paths. You've got the stereotypical diving instructor that's available to you, but there's a load of other great places that the, that the sport that we all love can take you. We've been discussing this this ideology with a few different people in recent weeks and we're going down the one of my favorite places now we're going down the creative realm this week i'm very very pleased to bring onto the channel uh noted underwater videographer and photographer uh becky kagan shot who if you're not following her work you need to go and check out liquidproductions.com because hashtag wow <laughs> <laughs> becky thank you for joining us thank you so much i really appreciate that Really great having you here. Um, one creative to another. It's just really, really nice to be talking to someone who loves the same thing I do. So, but I know you're busy. So, I, if if you're happy, I will just get straight into this. Um, can you tell our audience a bit about your job and what it usually entails? Yeah, of course. I mean, I absolutely. First off, I absolutely love my job. When I was young. I dreamed of doing underwater videography, photography, and quite honestly, I never really thought that I could make it into a career, but obviously with a lot of hard work, passion, and persistence, I have made it into a career. So um, as an underwater image maker, um, I do both uh, underwater photography and video, and basically uh, I, ex I, I focus on extreme underwater environments and I'll do any type of underwater work, but really where my, my bread and butter kind of comes from is doing like underwater cave shoots, uh, deep shipwrecks, uh, polar diving a lot in the Arctic and Antarctic. Um, but then I will shoot marine life as well. Uh, so a lot of times a job comes around, they'll get a call from a producer looking for an underwater cameraman to work on the documentary. And then I work with that producer and that team to come up with a shot list. And uh, then I travel out to the location, which that's usually the hardest part of the job is all the packing and all the coordination of gear and equipment and making sure everything works and having backup equipment just in case something does break because failure is not an option on most of these huh. shoots and then uh then we we start to to work with uh the environment that we're in and and get the job done and that can always be crazy because again it's different environments it's always changing and sometimes we only have a week to kind of get all the shots that we need to get um and produce for that for that particular documentary or project there you go wow in depth depth that um, so you mentioned that this was always kind of a dream job for you but did you did you start as a diver or did you start as a photographer or videographer and how did you transition from one into the other? I did start as a diver. So I started diving when I was 12 years old and I have never stopped. I never had a hiatus from it. I have been actively diving that entire time, even through high school, through college. I was teaching scuba, cave diving, everything. So um, I did pick up a camera when I was probably about... 13, 14 years old. And my very first camera is pretty sad, but it was an Icolite housing that took disposable cameras that you put disposable cameras into. And I that was my first underwater it. camera. And from there, I got really fancy with an Icolite film camera and then started shooting film underwater and kind of progressed from there. But um, I did start out as a diver. And then the, the photography kind of came right after I started diving because I wanted to show friends and family what I loved so much about all of the different underwater environments that I was seeing. So I sort of just started out by taking the camera just to show people what I was seeing. And then I started to enjoy the challenge of, of what does make a good photo uh, out of the 27 shots on film. Maybe I'd get one or two good ones and I'd go, right. oh, what, what did I do to get that? Why is that shot better than all these other ones? And so I just started uh, kind of honing my craft and, and really doing it for fun. Nice. Diver into image maker. I love that. You've kind of alluded to this already in your, in your opening statement about, you know, the dream job and about some of the various people you work with, with documentaries. But can you tell us more about some of these different clients uh, you work with? And also, here's your chance, like, tell us about Liquid Productions. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, uh, so when I started shooting, then I, I, all through college, I was shooting. I started applying my skills uh, that I was learning on land to my underwater shots. And uh, I started getting better and I started getting hired on by 
by different companies or some companies would start buying some of my stock photos for uh, like dive manufacturers would start buying stock imagery. So it, it kind of taught me, oh, I need to focus like on logos or I need to like, you know, hone in on certain certain things like this is what people like. And by the time I was like 25, 26, uh, I was already I mean, at that time I was already cave diving. I was on a rebreather. I was diving deep caves doing trimix and I was kind of networking with the right people in the dive industry and got hired on to do my first uh, underwater documentaries. So I didn't think it would happen that quickly for me. Uh, I thought it was going to be a lot of uh, uh, more years of, of work, but I kind of found that myself in the right place, right time. And when I had, because I was doing it for fun, I had the reel or I had the work to be able to show people. And this is like right around the time YouTube is coming out. So it wasn't yeah. like you could like put your work everywhere all over social media. I mean, I'd have to send people like CDs of <laughs> my work uh, back at that time. So uh, when I was around 27, I met my now husband, David, and we started up Liquid Productions. And uh, our company kind of took off in around 2008 when I left my job in news and I was already working on documentaries. But once I left my job as a photojournalist, uh, it seemed like more work came because then I was available and people knew that I was available. So um, so it's it's worked out really well. And, and we've my, my husband and I have done a lot of work together, a lot of cave diving documentaries together. Uh, you know, this past February, we were doing ice diving in Michigan and he was my model and then he was shooting me for some of the shots. So that was fantastic. But, um, you know, our company has evolved in a lot of ways over the years. So it started out with doing just underwater documentaries uh, for Nat Geo, Discovery Channel, Red Bull, Travel Channel, anyone who called us up uh, who needed an underwater cameraman. And then it's evolved since then into doing more still photography. Uh, I do more of the stills and, and I, I absolutely love doing still photography. But for most of my career, it's never really been where the, the money has been. It's really that's been a harder it's been a harder route with stills. Yeah. Um, so but I, I found myself, you know, over the last 10, 15 years, really, again, networking with all of the different magazine editors. And now I write for about six or seven dive magazines. Um, internationally. So you can find my work in Alert Diver and Diver Magazine and Scuba Diving and um, all kinds of German and French magazines. So, you know, they kind of come back and, and ask me for, for articles and work and um, things like that. So um, you can also find my work in books. So over the last couple of years, I'll also contribute to books, whether it's articles or photography, um, at ads. I'm working with Seiko right now, Seiko Watches, and we're doing a lot of um, different adventure photography in different environments uh, for their for their products. So that's really fun. And then I guess one of the last outlets our company has taken, I mean, you've got stock footage. So uh, I teach, I am a technical diving instructor and I teach rebreathers and technical diving in my spare time when I, when I can. And I absolutely love it because it keeps my skills fresh and it kind of keeps me uh, it, it takes me back to my core, my roots, where I'm, I'm just a diver at heart. I love diving. I love sharing my passion for diving with others. So I've continued to teach over the years. And even though I don't teach, maybe I teach four or five classes a year, but I still really enjoy it. And then I run expeditions to different places like Antarctica or Truck Lagoon. And those allow me to still, again, network, have fun with other divers, and then shoot stock photography and video that I can then um, you know, sell to to documentaries, especially in the last two years with COVID. A lot mm -hmm. of places have been looking for stock photography or stock video. So um, the that's that's worked out really well. So I guess the biggest uh, the biggest lesson here is just diversity. You have to diversify because sometimes it's you know work can be really busy, and other times it can be uh, very thin. So um, I've really found over the years that diversifying is one of the best things you can possibly do. I mean, that's some free, that's some free career advice for any aspiring photographers and videographers right there. And I've, I've mentioned that on GUE TV before, like you, if you want to be a creative, as you just said, you must branch out in different directions. Um, so yeah, it's clearly always been something you wanted to do. Um, you've insinuated that it, it would you, I mean, did you insinuate that it almost happened by circumstance that first job you got? Not really. I mean, obviously it was it was years of of diving Drafting. yeah and networking and all of that and then i just kind of fell um you know into the right group of people and we were doing a lot of uh 
shooting and on deep cave in deep caves and deep wrecks in Florida. And um, the person I was diving with knew somebody who was starting uh, to do a show for Science Channel, and they said they needed another a camera, another cameraman, but they would also prefer it to be a woman, which was great. And so uh, my very first hired job was to go to Truck Lagoon. So I was like 25 years old and I'm like, I'm getting, I'm going to Truck Lagoon. This is amazing. Uh, so it was, uh, it was a really, really wild experience. Yeah. And Truck Lagoon for someone who likes extreme underwater environments, that's like a holy grail for you, I imagine, right? It was. I, I had no idea what I was getting into, though. I mean, it was just mine. I was really more of a cave diver at the time, so I, I enjoyed shipwrecks, and those ones just blew my mind. I mean, I, I was my my one regret from that very first shoot was that I focused. I was I was so nervous because it was my very first job. I was I got hired to do, and I focused so much on focusing and camera and mm -hmm. and just getting the right angles and shots that I never really looked around with my own eyes. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't remember a lot from that first trip, except my mind just being blown with all the different things I was seeing, uh, you know, on the wrecks, all the tanks and trucks and bombs and torpedoes. It just was just overwhelming. Uh, so I've gone back a couple of times since then, and I, I make sure I look with my own eyes now, but, but it was a really great opportunity. And, uh, mm. and we did several shoots after that. And then I started working a lot with Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution and the National Park Service, which took me to some really interesting places um, all over the United States and, and got to do some really great shoots with them as well. That's awesome. Can I actually just ask a bonus question here? Just, but you, you've mentioned that, you know, the overwhelming sensation, because I mentioned on an episode I did recently on GUE TV about which focused on teaching people how to white balance a camera. And one of the points I made was that it's very, very easy when you get overwhelmed with everything to forget one or two things. So as a seasoned veteran confession time, have you ever forgotten to correctly set your white balance? Oh, oh yeah. Okay. There you go. <laughs> yes. I, I have forgotten to put batteries in my strobes. I've forgotten memory cards. I've, yeah, I, I've, if, if there is a problem you've had, I've done it, except for leaving the lens cap on the camera. I've never, I've never done that one, knock on wood. <laughs> but, but you know what? All of those, um, I always tell people that those are, those, that's experience. Like, hmm. you know, I had to, I don't know if you know Buford Springs in Florida. A lot, maybe a lot of your your listeners and viewers will. But uh, back in the day, there was no boardwalk, and you had to just walk out there, and you're up to your like shins and mud, and it's a long walk. And I had a rebreather and all this stuff, and I dragged my camera all the way out there, only to realize my with my very first underwater shot that I had forgotten to put the stro the batteries in the strobes, and I was oh. so so bummed. And to this day. Like I just, I make sure I, one of the other biggest piece of advice I can always give people is just takes, it takes 10 seconds, turn your camera on, turn your strobes or your video lights on, just turn everything on and just take a couple test shots and make sure everything's working. Um, I've done like star time lapses at night where I've, I've taken my camera out of the housing and then I've put the lens on manual focus versus auto focus and then put mm -hmm. it back in the housing and then I, I can't focus anything underwater. So it's, I, I, yeah, the biggest, the biggest thing is you'll catch a lot of problems if you just test, test it out before you get in the water and make sure everything's working. Okay. That's a great tip. I love that. Um, what would you say the biggest challenge about your role is and what's been the most difficult project you've worked on and why? And then there'll be another, there'll be a bonus question to this in a moment, but let's cover this. Um, I guess the biggest challenge has always been just, I guess, looking and looking for work and finding work um, and kind of getting over the fact that you are freelance. And so it's not a steady, you know, week by weekly paycheck. And sometimes you're doing really well, you've got a lot of work and other times you don't have anything going on at all. So um, it really is a lifestyle and one that you kind of have to go into and accept and and also know that it's not a Monday through Friday job. It's not a nine to five job. I work holidays, weekends. Sometimes I'll work for a month and I miss Christmas. Um, but, you know, your family also has to be understanding about, about that and know that it's work. And, um, and yeah, and you have to, to kind of go into it, you know, both feet first and go, all right, I know this is going to be a lot of work, but this is what I love to do and this is what I want to do. So I think that's the biggest challenge is just that, it's it's a different lifestyle than what most people are used to. Yeah, except that weekends do not exist anymore, essentially, right? There's no such thing as a weekend. <laughs> <laughs> no, just days off, you know. But 
again, like I, I, I enjoy that. I'll work for a month straight. I'm exhausted, but then I get home and I might have two or three weeks off before my next job or a month off before my next job. Now yeah. I'm usually working on the next job during right. that time, but at least I can be home for, if I'm away for large t periods of time, then I can be home for large periods of time too. That's nice. Um, and the most difficult project you've worked on and why? Ooh, uh, every project kind of has its challenges. And for me, that's, that's what kind of, that's what keeps this, this career exciting is I like mm. challenges. Um, but I would probably say one of the biggest ones I had was working on a Nat Geo shoot in Mexico. Um, my husband was on this shoot as well. And unfortunately it was the wrong time of year. It was August and it was hurricane season and, mm. you know, uh, we didn't get to choose the team. So it was difficult there as well. And, um, it just had its, it, it was a shoot where we had to do live audio and video feed out of this um, cenote. And you know, we just had some equipment problems, but we we got through it. And we actually had to go back a second time because a hurricane blew us out by the time we got everything there and set up and ready to go. A uh, big hurricane came in. So we had to go back several months later. But um, that one was pretty frustrating just because of the logistics involved with, with that particular shoot. So you've also mentioned, obviously, throughout um, this the show a few times already that, you know, extreme environments, your thing. Um, if you do shoot wildlife, what's proven to be the trickiest bit of wildlife that you've encountered to film? Well, a couple things. Um, so I'd say uh, one of the, the funny ones is uh, humpback whales. I think humpback whales, for me, are very difficult. Yeah, you, yeah. you have this large animal. I don't know if you've ever shot humpbacks. but I have once, once. Was it hard for you? I got super lucky because it was a it was a mother and a calf and they were both at the surface. So I got monumentally lucky. They weren't moving that much. But I've I've seen some stuff which is far superior to what I've done. And I kind of think, how? Yeah, you you did get yeah, you definitely got lucky. Um, yeah, we had uh, it was it was a giant 300 pound camera too. So we were trying to shoot 3D of whales. So it was on and off a boat for you know one of these small boats in the Dominican Republic. And you know, you can only get so close and you have to wait a certain amount period of time before you can move in. And yeah, you know, there's just there's a lot of rules surrounding mm. humpbacks, which is which is great, but yeah. um, it just made it really difficult. And then here it is, you've got this large animal, and you know, we're pretty tiny and they just spook really easily and would just take off. So um, I think humpbacks are, are pretty challenging to shoot. And uh, another challenging animal I've, I've had some luck with recently is uh, leopard seals in Antarctica, just because mm. it's so hard to get to Antarctica. And uh, you get there and you'll see leopard seals hanging out on the ice everywhere. But you're like, please, one of you get in the water, please. Yeah. And uh, finally, in 2020, I got a really great leopard seal experience, but it was my my second trip there. And it was the very last day of the trip. And I thought, oh, OK, it's not going to happen again. I'm going to have to come back a third time. But it, it did happen. But I thought leopard seals were pretty difficult as well, just because they're an apex predator. They're at the bottom of the planet, you know, icy environments, mm -hmm. um, tough, tough to shoot as well. Yeah, mo fast moving animal around lots of bitty iceberg bits and stuff. So. Yeah, that blows my one out of the water, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> um, which project have you been most proud to be involved in? Uh, I'd probably say my most recent projects. Uh, so recently I've been working a lot with, uh, like I said, with Seiko Watches. And what's been really amazing is they they are really supportive about uh, adventure and expeditions. So they've been letting me plan uh, plan my own expeditions, basically. So my most recent one was I planned to go diving inside of glaciers in Alaska. So we were just there a month ago in November, and it was wild. Uh, we mm. had to take a helicopter out to the glacier. So it was about four helicopter runs by the time we got the people, the gear, you know, the topside video team and their gear and everything out uh, onto the glacier. And then we were diving in these, these places called Mulans. And it's basically their pools in the summertime, but in November they've iced over. And mm -hmm. so they look like just a giant ice cave. And so we had to cut our hole and the temperatures just plummeted. It went from zero to negative four to negative nine to negative 15 um, really quickly. So it was really cold. And um, the other danger there was these, uh, these moulins, they can just drain at any time because you're diving oh. inside the glacier. And it's water filled, but we had to wear harnesses and and have a whole safety team topside and use ice screws and everything. And, and we had a whole safety plan because I'm very safety conscious. And um, 
because these since the glacier is moving, if it basically comes unplugged, uh, these this water can just drain right yeah. out of it, sucking you down to wherever it goes. So uh, kind of terrifying. Definitely had a couple nightmares over it. Uh, but once I was in the environment, I mean, it was just I've never been surrounded by so much ice and there were ice caves and it wow. was just so stunningly beautiful. You'd see these cracks in the ice where it broke from probably movement and then mm. refilled with water and it, it was crystal clear. Uh, so it was, it was really stunning, but it was, it was a really neat to explore for me, a brand new environment. And I've done lots of ice diving. I mean, Arctic, Antarctic, uh, Great Lakes. Uh, I've been in the Bering Sea shooting Bering Sea gold for Discovery Channel, lots of ice diving, but never, I never even knew you could dive inside of a glacier. So uh, no. this is no, right. I mean, it no. was pretty adventurous and really exciting. I mean, the helicopter would drop us off. We'd jump out in our dry suits like rock stars and they'd fly out to go get the next team. And in the meantime, we're like getting our, our gear together and trying to keep everything from freezing. And and then uh, there we were just jumping inside of this ice, basically this ice cave. So uh, that was my most recent project. And it was it was just mesmerizing. It was really mesmerizing. Yeah, Alaska is always somewhere I've really, really wanted to go. Um, you've just added a reason to it. That that sounds. I probably need a permit of some sort to do that. Yeah, I will say that, they don't actually. They don't normally do the uh, yeah. uh, dive Alaska out there, and they're they're a GV uh, shop, yeah. but they they don't normally take people out to go do that type of diving just because of the dangers involved and the risks involved in doing it. So we had a really like I said, we we talked for months about safety plans and the what ifs and things like that. So everybody was a very experienced um, ice diver and very mm -hmm. aware of all the issues and. I mean, a negative 15 degrees too. just even a dry suit failure of any kinds would have been pretty, pretty detrimental. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So. I, I almost feel awkward asking this next question because I don't think there's an answer to it. But let's give it a try. How does an average day slash week look when you work as an underwater image maker? Uh, it can, it's all over the place, right? Uh, so it depends on the week. Sometimes like right now I'm home and I'm packing to leave for Antarctica in two weeks. So I'm packing, I'm talking with the clients about the shots they want. I'm fixing gear from the last shoot, buying new gear for the current shoot. Um, and then of course there's the unfun stuff like doing the invoices and, mm. uh, you know, getting those paid and sent out. And then, um, you know, obviously all the logistics coming up for, for the next shoot. And I'm still editing photos from my last one. So, you know, it's, it's a bit of a mix of, of everything. Um, I don't just get to usually sit and, and relax. Um, I guess my relaxing time is just watching TV and editing photos at the same time, but, but yeah, there's, there's always something going on. And for the, for the guys who are watching the GUE TV series at the moment, what is your preferred editing software of choice, Becky? Well, uh, so, I mean, I'm using Adobe Photoshop for, mm -hmm. uh, well, I use Nikon Raw and then Adobe Photoshop for my stills. And then I'm using Adobe Premiere for video editing. Very good. Adobe Suite. Yeah. Love to hear that. Um, yeah. you, you've alluded to this already. I just like to delve a bit deeper. So do you prefer, you've, I think I know the answer to the first part. Do you prefer working with photography or video? You've, you've kind of said photography is your, your, yeah. your happy place, but the uh, question is why? I, I really love both uh, for different reasons. And I mean, like I said, I like variety in my life. That's why like, mm. I love going from cave projects to shipwrecks to warm water, cold water. I really enjoy variety. Um, and I go back and forth with still and video as well. Probably because I, I started out as a stills photographer. So stills have always just been close to my heart. And I like the challenge of trying to capture you know, say I go to Antarctica, trying to capture the essence and the feeling of Antarctica in one shot. Like that's the challenge. How do you tell the story in one, in one, one or a couple shots? Like, so that's, that can be really challenging. It's not just easy to, to go and, and take a couple shots. Um, but with video, I kind of like the, I like the creative side of video because you can really tell a story through video and you and I could go to the same location, shoot very similar things, but in the editing process, tell very different stories. So I also really love that aspect about video and like the storytelling side of, of shooting, shooting video. So it, it sort of depends on my mood. I like to do a bit of both and it depends on the location and maybe the story that I'm trying to tell. Um, when I'm diving in the Great Lakes, I love shooting stills just because the shipwrecks are so eerie and haunting looking. So I really 
enjoy stills there a little bit more, but then I go to a place like Truck Lagoon and I prefer shooting video just because there's so much movement and yeah. the marine life on the wrecks and, and all the different, I mean, there's just, you know, artifacts everywhere. So I really enjoy uh, video there. So it just, uh, it all depends, but I'd probably say stills over video if I have a choice, but I do enjoy shooting both. Nice. Okay. So now moving on to the, we've got a good idea of who you are now, just wrapping up with the career side of things. What qualifications would you say one needs to become an underwater photographer and or videographer? Well, that's a loaded question, isn't it? <laughs> um, so I would say to somebody that it's not just about image making or being an underwater photographer, you've got to be a team player and be a self starter because you know, you're, you're constantly looking for work and, and working with teams of people. Um, being flexible and being a problem solver is also um, a really good attribute. And then like for me, I was very persistent and this is my passion. So um, I never knew if I was ever going to make it into a career, but I was so persistent with it that um, basically it, it, you know, I, I made it happen. It wasn't just luck. I did make it happen. So you have to be persistent. Uh, sometimes it won't always come to you. So when I say persistent, you know, get out there and network, keep shooting, keep shooting for you because mm. I mean, if you shoot for you, then I feel that that's when your passion comes through and others will pick up on that and notice. And like you and I just talked about, you're going to make mistakes. So you have to make those mistakes before you can really get hired on to do like a big project for Nat Geo or Discovery. Because if you don't make those mistakes beforehand and you make them on these shoots, unfortunately, you're not, you're probably never going to get hired again. So I don't want to mm -hmm. scare anybody by saying that, but it's, it's, it's just real. It's the truth. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, make your mistakes and, um, and learn from them that way. You don't, you don't make them again because mistakes are just not an option on a lot of these, a lot of these shoots. And when, when problems do happen, cause they will, we're taking electronic equipment underwater. You just have yeah. to learn to go with it and, and fix it and know, okay, I've got a backup in mind or a backup system and have a backup plan and just be able to problem solve. So, um, and then last, just, really work on your diving skills. I mean, it's not just about the underwater photography and video, but it's also about being a good diver, not wrecking the environment that you're in and also knowing a bit about the environment that you're in. Because I mean, for me, I mean, how, how can I go shoot leopard seals in Antarctica if I don't know anything about where to find them or the environment that they live in? Are they dangerous? Like what kind of, you know, uh, body language are they going to present to me if they do start getting amped up? So um, yeah, learn, learn about the places that you're going to and the, the animal life or the caves or the, the places that you're shooting. I'm so happy you said that. I, that that often I feel gets breezed over a lot when it comes to underwater imagery. So I'm really happy you've said that. So that was quite a comprehensive answer. Just to kind of um, build on that maybe a little bit, what career advice would you give to anyone looking to become an underwater photographer or videographer? Because it's hard. We're like We've both been there. You're still there, and it's hard. It is. It is. And that's always a tough question to answer because there's not – it's not a black and white answer. Like, yeah, you want to be an underwater photographer, do this. I mean, it's, it's a different path for a lot of different people that I know. Um, I would say like starting your own business is, is a good idea or taking some business courses because it isn't the side that you see isn't all just travel and shooting underwater, right. but it's also, um, just doing business and doing contracts and understanding contracts so that, you know, you're making the right decisions uh, when you, when you get into this stuff and doing invoicing and things like that. Um, and then just buying the gear that you need and just starting to build your portfolio. Uh, just know that it could take a year. It could take five years. It could take 15 years uh, yep. to, to get hired on and it's different for everybody. And, and, yeah, it's, it's tough. Um, it's, it's a very competitive career path, but if you're, if you're doing it for you, I truly believe if you love it and you get out there and you do it for you, then others are going to see that. And your passion comes through in your work. And even if you never get hired on to do, you know, a big documentary project, well then just be happy in the, in the work that you're doing or find other projects to get involved with, uh, find exploration projects where they need a team photographer or videographer, because those yeah. are just as satisfying, if not more satisfying mm -hmm. contributing to, to projects like that. Completely agree with that hundred percent. Um, and to finish up, Becky, are there any upcoming projects you're involved in that we can look forward to either reading more about or seeing soon? 
yeah. Uh, so I've got this, um, the video that we'll, we shot in Alaska doing the glacier diving that is in the works and it's going to be edited here hopefully soon into a couple, like maybe three, five, 10 minute pieces. And I'll be sharing that on my social media and that'll come out on Seiko's uh, website as well. Once, once that is ready, ready to be out. And uh, I've got several different magazine articles out right now. There's one in Alert Diver magazine about the photogrammetry work that I've been doing over the past year and a half. Um, and I just did a shoot for Smithsonian TV about a brand new shipwreck discovery in the Great Lakes this summer, which is really exciting. So hopefully that'll be out maybe by next summer. And that's going to be international as well. So not just airing here in the States, but it'll air um, all over Europe uh, as well. So there's always uh, there's always something going on. Always something that's exciting. It. And uh, for anyone who wants to follow you on socials, where can they find you? Uh, so I post a lot on Instagram. So you can find me at Becky underscore Kagan underscore shot on Instagram. You can follow my Facebook page. It's Becky Kagan shot underwater DP or liquid productions has its own Facebook page. And uh, I also post on my galleries on my liquid productions website. So check that out as well. Fantastic. And guys, just to sum up for me, then you've heard it from Becky. You've heard it from our previous previous uh guests on the show uh it does seem to be that the th every single person no matter what career of diving they've got into the one word that keeps on coming back is passion as long as you've got passion for what you're doing as long as you've got drive to fill that passion just keep working and you'll get there you can be a diving instructor we've all done it we love it but there's so much more that diving can take you on so many great adventures, which you can go on so many amazing careers. And this is just one of them, but that's it for this episode of careers of diving. Thank you so much to Becky for joining us. If you are new to the channel, please be sure to hit the subscribe button, tickle the notification bell. So, you know, whenever we've got a new bit of content coming out and please be sure to like the video and share the video with anyone who may be interested. Becky, thank you so much for joining us and uh, look forward to more of your work. Thanks so much for having me.